Jesus provides our needs, our daily needs, and this is evident from what he said when he told everyone to give up everything and follow him. First of all, he had to provide uh, money for his disciples, the ones that were following him there for three and a half years while he was on this earth, and then, of course, for their families and everything. There were up to 70 uh, disciples at a time that he sent out in twos that were following him. They would have needed money, and their families need money, um, just in the following. God obviously brought the money. We had one man, Judas Iscariot, that was allocated to be the treasurer and to give money to the poor, not just money to the disciples. But Jesus said that if you uh, seek the kingdom and stop seeking money, seek the kingdom, then all the things that unbelievers seek for daily needs uh, will be given to you as well. This is a promise. It's found in Matthew chapter 6 and verses 31 onwards. Seek the kingdom. Now the opposite applies too. If you seek the money, then God can't provide. But if you seek the kingdom and trust God for the money, for your clothes, for your food, for your shelter, for your whatever the Gentiles need, and I mean the Gentiles need uh, you know, education for their children and all sorts of things. You know? So the Gentiles uh, are the unbelievers, the people who, who do not follow Jesus. They have, are consumed with daily living problems, like the men must work, sometimes the women too. They must uh, bring the money in, they must uh, find a good school for their children, etc., etc., etc. Now, when Jesus told people to follow him, he said, you will not be jeopardized. You will, your needs will be met. Your children will have school. You don't look for it. Now, this is why I'm against people, even pastors sending their wives out to work, because it shows a total lack of trust and unbelief in the passages that Jesus has spoken. He called everybody to follow him, not even to think how they were going to get their needs met. You know, when you start a new ministry in a new uh, country somewhere, most often you've got to start from scratch, like I have. Several times in my life now, I had to go somewhere and begin all over again. And it's not easy, and each time you have to grow. Do you understand? And um, But you do, you don't... Uh, lose weight you don't uh, lose in you, know, you lose income but you don't lose what you need for life and for your family you know my children never even knew they were in the ministry when they grew up because they're not and I, talk, I spoke to God about that right at the beginning I'm called I'll even die for you and do whatever you need but my children are not and they must have a normal life and God agreed and they always did now <coughs> The thing about the provision of God is that you need money for wholesome living, for godly living. If you're sleeping on the side of the street, that is not godly, that's not life, that's not living, that isn't hardly even existing. You can claim your job, claim the money you need, because God has promised to give you everything that you need for life and godliness. It's a promise. And you know, the devil would rob that from you if you let him. Life and circumstances would rob it. You know, the Bible tells us a man who won't work shouldn't eat. Okay? Uh, some of us are called into full-time work in the, in the ministry, like me, uh, for the last... 28 years or 30, 30 years I have not been doing a regular job or any kind of business in 30 years. Okay, And before that I was a multimillionaire businessman. But you know when I went in the ministry I didn't have a penny of that left. Not even one penny left. God had to supply everything and he did. And he has always. And I've run centers that cost $400,000 a year to run. And, and uh, all by faith. And I never ask people for money. Ever. And I never fundraise. Ever. Okay? 
<coughs> and I won't do it even now, and I go round saying it's totally wrong. To fundraise is wrong. Trust God, he's his business, not ours. I'm employed by Almighty God. If he can't raise the funds, then who can? I'm his employee. I am not the director. Jesus Christ is the director. And he promised to provide, and he does. Amen. Sometimes you've got to uh, eat frugally, but always we eat. Now, <clears throat> I don't believe in prosperity of materialism. That's a big con for raising money so that you can live like a fat cat and be in luxury. This is Antichrist teaching. It is not of God. Okay? People have taken Kenneth Hagin's teaching and warped it and made it out to be that God wants you to live like a king on this earth. That is an absolute lie. Jesus Christ is our example, our cornerstone, and he would never do that. Okay? He would never, ever do that. And uh, I tell you, they need to be rebuked, all of them, for amassing money like that. You see, you had a man called Smith Wigglesworth lived in this very town. My grandfather served under his ministry. And let me tell you something, Smith Wigglesworth got millions of do uh, pounds and dollars, but he never took anything for himself except what he needed for basic frugal living. And if you see his house today at 72 Victor Road here in Bradford, you will see what a small little place it was that he lived in. But you know he made it as a great man of God to the end, at the age of 89, and is buried in the city. Okay? He did not falter because he would not make himself rich through the gospel. And neither must you. It tells you quite clearly in the Bible that this is wrong, evil practice, and it's not of God. And when the people get their prayers answered for fat cat luxuries, let me tell you, it is not God who is answering those prayers. God does not spoil his children. That would be to destroy them. People say, well, we can handle it. What a lie. You've got gold bath taps and toilets that cost more than my whole house cost. What is this kind of nonsense? Straight from the pit of hell, straight from the devil. God told us our prosperity is primarily soul prosperity but of course it's the prosperity of provision you need money to eat you need money for regular things of life you see and here's the key to getting money from God and his kingdom don't seek it when you've spoken to God about it once Trust him, and don't tell anybody else ever your need. If you tell people, you know what happens? God is insulted. He promised you that money. Now you go and beg others like you don't believe him. He's your friend. He's your father. He's in the same room as you when you pray. Now you go out straight away and ask others to pray. Like you totally mistrust God. What kind of obsequious and, and filthy doctrine is this that insults the Spirit of Grace, the Holy Spirit, and that causes God to be hurt and wounded by your, your uh, unbelief and doubt? Such things ought not to be, beloved. Such things ought not to be. Now, God wants you to have everything you need. And if you haven't got that, I tell you, the devil robs you. You're doing something wrong. When God brings money, ask him what's it for. Don't straight away go out and just use it for any old thing you want. Be sure to, to allocate it to what it's meant for. Sometimes he just wants you to give it away. And I mean that. He provides seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Two kinds of income. One to, for you to give in tithes and offerings to your pastor, the person who feeds you the most, the shepherd of your soul. The one who's your overseer, the one you look up to as father. He gives you money to send to him, father in Christ. Then he gives you money to give to the poor. 
Then he gives you money for various offerings in church work or, or ministry work or other things. And the Holy Spirit will show you. These three things he asks you to do. He provides everything. Please don't eat or use the money that's meant for seed. Don't use it for eating for your own benefit. If you do, you will somehow block the, the income of God in your life. And we don't want to do that. You'll also block your healing and all sorts of other things just by wrongly using money, I'm telling you. You have to have the right spirit when you come to God, the right attitude. That's why you must be born again. You must have a different attitude, a Jesus attitude. A Jesus attitude thinks of other people first, not himself. Amen. Your needs come second. When you get a hundred pounds, a thousand dollars, ask God, what is it for? If he says it's for ministry or uh, you know, or tithes, tithes are ten percent of all your income every month. You know, that you don't even have to ask God. But the other thing, what is this for? This is for giving. God, Holy Spirit will tell you. Don't use it. Don't ever use it. Give it for what he wants you to give. Even if it's a tiny amount. Or if it's a mighty amount. Just do what you're told. And God will open up the floodgates and bring the rest. These principles are true. Where the prosperity principle has gone wrong is it says you must give it to the pastor so he can have a $10 million house. That's a load of rubbish. okay? And, and it comes straight from hell. No pastor should have these things. He is a worker in the field with Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ didn't even have a place to put down his head. This is the work of Jesus Christ. Now the Bible tells us that the sheep should provide materially for the shepherd. Now, this is Jesus Christ's command, not just an option. It's a command. Okay? And a Jesus himself has commanded these things. Amen. Now, when you follow the economic way of God, the economic plan of God, then everything falls into order and all your needs get met. You know, give the money away that's meant to be given. Don't hold it. Trust God. Okay? And then use the money that's meant for you and your family. Amen. If you do this properly and allocate the resources properly, Everything will work the way the Bible says it. Don't fundraise. Don't get afraid that you will lose. You won't. It's a promise of God and you can trust God. Amen. Father, let them see it. Let them see it. Let them see it. Open their eyes, my God. Let them see so that they can have the provision that you promised to every believer in Christ Jesus. Amen.